The last video in our series on digital media is going to focus on digital video. This is some really cool stuff, by the way. What we're looking at with digital video, what we're actually looking at with any video, any film, is static images. We're looking at moving pictures, a series of static shots that move fast enough to create the illusion magic of movement, which is pretty cool. And the, the principle behind video is the same as it was when it was first discovered that we could do this. The fact that we capture images of movement, of motion, of action, and we display them at a certain speed to trick the people who are watching into thinking there's actually movement on the screen. It's kind of neat stuff here. The movement of these static images is called the frame rate, and we have FPS or frames per second. If you've ever noticed that when you go to the movie theaters, the film looks different than video. Part of that is about how fast those frames per second are. Movies work at about 24 frames per second, 24 FPS, while video, like you're watching right now, works at about 30 FPS. It's one of the reasons why we notice the difference between video and film, why it has a different kind of feel to it. Not to mention the expense of the equipment is also another big reason why there's a few difference. Standard definition versus high definition. This is the difference between SD and HD. And it comes down to one basic word, and that's resolution. So, for example, you might be watching these videos in HD. You might be watching them in SD. You can tell if you take a look at the bottom, let's see, uh, corner of the YouTube channel. There's like a little gear, and you can select if you want to watch it in SD or HD. Again, this comes down to one word, and that's resolution. Resolution is about how many pixels we can squeeze on a screen. Now, I did a separate video just on SD and HD, and I'm going to link it here. And you can click on it and watch it. It's also part of my YouTube channel. And it kind of gives a, a more involved explanation of SD versus HD. But let's cover the basics here. So this all comes down, again, to resolution, how many pixels. Pixels is a combination. It's a mashup of two words. It's picture and element. So it's the element of pictures. The element of pictures, they are the color blobs that we put together with other pixels to create a picture. So they're the color blobs we merge together in order to make a picture. So the more of these color blobs we can put on a screen, the clearer the image becomes. Other things to look at as far as SD and HD, we have the numbers. So for example, standard HD numbers, you might hear of 1280 uh, by 720 pixels as well as 1920 by 1080. How many pixels that go across, how many pixels go down? The more we can shove in there, again, the higher the resolution becomes. Then we have something called aspect ratio. If you remember before we had our HD televisions, before we had our widescreen televisions, if you wanted to watch a VHS, you would have a little boxy feel on your video. And then you could buy widescreen, which had the black bars on the top and the bottom. This is aspect ratio. Standard definition is four by three, which means for every four inches wide on the screen, it has to be three inches tall. HD is more of a widescreen. It's 16 by nine, which means for every 16 inches wide, you're nine inches tall. If you take a look at some of the first videos in this series on the introduction to computers, you'll notice I have some black parts on the side because I wasn't shooting kind of wide enough. I wasn't really getting out there for the HD for the widescreen. Now we take up your entire screen. At least that's what we should be doing. Finally, uh, or not finally, we still have a couple more things we need to talk about, but let's talk about camcorders. So you want to go buy a camcorder, what should you look for? The first thing you should look for is probably your storage system. How are you going to store the information? Are you going to use an internal hard drive, for example? Again, if you use your phone, it has a video uh, camera on it, camcorder. It has internal hard drive. You're storing onto the device itself. Are you storing it to a DVD? You can actually burn directly to a DVD as you're recording. Are you going to record to tape? Or are you going to record to flash memory? Are you going to record to an SD card? How are you going to record the information? I will say this. Removable media cards are the way to go or flash memory because you just drag the files onto your computer and you're done. The old tape version, the old tape version, the tape version, which aren't that old, you had to replay the entire tape while your computer captured it, which meant that if you recorded an hour's worth of footage, you had to play back an hour's worth of footage 
before you could even start editing it. Resolution, tell you right now, you want to shoot HD. You don't want to shoot SD, you want to shoot HD. As I'm recording this, 4K is an emerging technology. We'll see how that turns out. Interface, how does your camera interface with a computer? IEEE, this is FireWire, 1394, HDMI, USB. I would go definitely HDMI. FireWire would be uh, my choices as far as interfaces go. Codex, how does it save the file? Remember we talked about file formats, which we'll talk about in a second for video, but how does the camcorder save the information? And I'll tell you right now, you want to avoid proprietary. I had a camcorder for early days when I was shooting video that shooted very amazing, I mean, just crystal clear video. It was just gorgeous. But it used a proprietary format to store the files and it kept messing up on my computer. And there was nothing more frustrating than recording 20, 30 minutes of video only to find out you got to re-record it because the camera made a mistake. So those are some of the things to look for. This is not an all-inclusive list. For many people, I know myself included, price is kind of the driving force behind your purchasing on your, your digital media or your camcorder. I will also say, and you see me pull this out for the digital photography, the DSLR cameras have very powerful video recording uh, things now. In fact, you get a lot more people who are recording videos with your DSLRs. In fact, a lot of the YouTubers use a camera, a DSLR camera, to record their videos. One of the nice things about the DSLRs, you can actually pop out the lens, put different lenses on, so you have a great camera and you have a video recorder. One of the downsides is the audio. The audio um, input is always that mini jack, which is horrible for recording audio, so you would need a separate audio recorder uh, if you're going to do anything major with it uh, from there. Just like we talked about with your digital imaging and your digital audio, we have different file formats that we use for video. And here are four of the big ones that you're going to probably run into. We have AVI, which is Audio Video Interleaf File. This is created by Microsoft. If you're running on a Mac, you're going to need a program called VLC to run it. VLC is a free download, free program to run. MPEG. Uh, MPEG-4 is the most commonly used one for file sharing on the Internet. I would say MPEG is probably one of the biggest ones you're going to run into when you're recording video. Move, the movie file. This is your Apple QuickTime movie. This is your common file format found on a Mac. If you ever go to Apple Movie Trailers, this is how they store their online movie trailers there. And finally, WMV. This is Windows Media Video. This is your Microsoft's video compression format developed by, of course, Microsoft. Just like we had streaming audio, we also have streaming video. In fact, you're watching this now as streaming video. YouTube, of course, being the number one, I would say, streaming video site currently out there. In fact, I've read somewhere that more people watch YouTube videos in a day than people watch all the networks on television combined. This is some crazy stuff out there. So streaming video, in fact, uh, when I first moved to Stafford, Virginia, I went a year without actually having a television. I watched all of my TV content through YouTube or Hulu, which is the next one, watched it all online. You didn't need a television or cable to, well, you need cable with the internet, but you didn't need cable television to watch all this stuff. So you have YouTube, Hulu is another one, Vimeo, Netflix is streaming video, Amazon Prime just got into the world of streaming video as well. They have a similar collection to Netflix. I've seen them do studies on who has the most television shows. Netflix wins as far as having the most television series. Amazon Prime is good in that if you buy a video, let's say that you want to um, buy a movie. So for example, we moved back into our house not that long ago. A lot of our videos are still in boxes. A lot of our stuff is still in boxes. And I wanted to watch Evil Dead. Okay, Bruce Campbell, Evil Dead classic. Didn't know where the DVD was. Wound up going to Amazon, bought another copy for like nine bucks. It's on the cloud. I can watch this movie now anywhere I have internet access to. So it's pretty cool. Uh, Ustream Television, this is kind of interesting one. This is actually streams you live. So for example, if you're doing a radio show, television show, or you're doing some other activity, you can stream out there live what's going on. Okay, just like I talked about my choices for video or image editing software and audio editing software, here are my choices for video editing software. And by the way, I really am enjoying video editing and video production. 
I'll put a link here on my very first video short that I made. Kind of cool, kind of fun to do. Uh, longer than you would expect. But we use video editing software. In fact, we're able to do things now that would require entire production teams not long ago. In fact, you probably see my Star Wars poster in the back. I mean, when they did Star Wars, they had to have physical film. They had to cut physical film, edit. It's just crazy what we can do now. So my picks for video editing software, of course, we have to have Adobe on the list. They are the digital media masters, Adobe Premiere Pro. This is what I use for my more serious videos. For example, the short I made, I want serious, but more overhead videos. Uh, you have a lot of power with Premiere Pro. In fact, it's one of the industry standards out there if you're going to be a professional um, in the video world, in the movie world. Adobe Premiere Elements, this again is more for the consumer market, people who want a little bit of power but don't want too much stuff to put up with. Camtasia, that's how I'm editing these softwares. I'm doing screen captures, I'm doing quick lectures online. Camtasia is my choice for that one. It doesn't have as much power as Premiere Pro, but I don't want that power because I don't want to have to tweak everything. I want the computer to figure things out on its own for the most part. iMovie. iMovie comes and goes as far as power and they have great features and then they take features away and then they put the features back and then they take features away. But iMovie is, is built on, on your Mac. I will say this. If you record from an iPad, and iPads do a great job. In fact, there's an entire movement of filmmakers using iPads to record movies on. If you go from an iPad to your computer, let's say you want to go from an iPad to Premiere Pro, the frame rates can be weird. And so I've had to export movies out with iMovie and then bring them into Premiere Pro that way. But iMovie is also pretty good depending on what version they released. Another major player in your video editing software world is your Apple Final Cut Pro. This is also another uh, software program you probably want to know if you're going to get professional in your video editing. And then we also have Windows Movie Maker, which is built into Windows or it's a free download and you can edit videos that way. All right, finally, before we go, as always, I'd like to give you some links of places I think that are worth checking out. So here are my four for this lesson. First, Audacity. We talked about Audacity previously. It's a very powerful editing soft, audio editing software. Definitely worth downloading if you're going to be doing any audio editing. Video Maker, these guys have some fantastic new articles out there. They have a great magazine and tutorials. If you want to get into video making, I would definitely, definitely check them out. Media College, I kind of stumbled upon them as I was doing research for this presentation. Worth checking out. They've got a lot of really cool resources out there, a lot of knowledge that they're sharing. And finally, B&H. B&H is a retailer that sells some really cool video equipment, audio equipment, all sorts of good stuff. I think they're based out of New York. Their prices are competitive to what's out there. And uh, they've got some pretty good shipping. So check those out. Okay, that's going to conclude Lesson 7, Digital Media. I hope that you're enjoying these videos. Hope that you're subscribing to those videos. Those actually help out with my ratings. And, of course, click like. Until our next series of lessons, which will be Lesson 8, Database, have fun studying out there, and goodbye for now. Bye-bye.